It's early morning, and as a neighborhood sleeps, the Santa Ana Police Department's gang unit prepares a wake-up call for a local gang. I will walk it up to the front door now. This particular group has been involved in attempted murders, uh, weapons possession, and a lot of robberies. Based off of that data, we realized our normal saturation control just wasn't cutting it. So what we did is we wanted to focus on core members of that group. We hit seven different locations at the same time. That way, they couldn't spread word from you know one probationer to another that the gang units out and and they're out, uh, out doing checks. So we hit them all at the same time, that way we can catch them all by surprise. On this particular day, they've enlisted the help of neighboring agencies, as well as other units within the department for manpower. Each packet should have a background on our crook, uh, map of the location, uh, aerial photo, so you can plan your approach. Their effort pays off with six arrests that day, but the arrests are believed to have an even bigger impact. The intent behind it is, is I have identified those individuals as, as being leaders in the gang, and if you take them uh, out of the mix, then you hopefully stop that communication with other gang members. Till the wheels fall off. That's the mentality of Santa Ana's 10-man gang unit, who frequently work hours long after their shift ends and employ a variety of tactics from probation and parole checks to an unpredictable schedule to catch gang members off guard. He immediately uh, saw us coming down and he uh, tried to walk away and run into one of these uh, catering trucks where they usually uh, hide their narcotics uh, or uh, hide their, uh, their guns. The change in tactics over the last year or so include a change from targeting specific individuals who are active within a gang to targeting specific